guys, it's me, Vic 73 with some Team Tomahawk gameplay on the original Black Ops. Black Ops 1, we decided to go back just for some fun and give this a go. It was actually really, really enjoyable. You know, the people on Black Ops 1, they're not the same people that used to play. There were some pretty, pretty tough lobbies. It was actually really difficult to get a gameplay where we managed to win. We had to do a lot of warming up. And it's just so different throwing the uh, Tomahawks compared with the Combat Axe. Just the fact that they're so much slower to throw, yet they have such a bigger hitbox and at close range, they're so much easier to uh, kill people with. So, yeah, it was just fun to go back for a nice change and... Uh, just get some of those kills. So uh, that is the gameplay you guys are checking out. Let me know what you think of it. If you'd like to see some more sometime, do let me know. I don't really understand how I didn't get that guy there. The drop must be slightly different to what I'm used to with the combat axes. That's my excuse anyway. So uh, yeah, if you guys do enjoy the team combat... No, wait. Team Tomahawk. Team Tomahawk, that's what it is. If you enjoy the Black Ops 1 Team Tomahawk, let me know. And uh, I could be bringing it back more regularly. And uh, let me know if you'd like to see anything on any of the other Call of Duty games, because that could be arranged. Anyway, so this game, Black Ops 1, I was actually playing it, and I realised, you know, there isn't a huge amount of difference between this game and Black Ops 2. There really isn't, and you're looking at a two-generation jump here from Call of Duty Black Ops to Call of Duty Black Ops 2. And the only real difference is, I guess, the way the score streaks work. The weapons and maps have been changed. Um... I can't really think of any, you know, strikingly different thing. I mean, pick 10 is great, but there's nothing hugely different between this game and Black Ops 2. You know, a lot of the maps I noticed were the same. You've got a Firing Range remake, Stadium remake. You've got um, the uh, Nuketown remake, and there was one more that I can't seem to remember. But, uh, yeah, I just noticed that, and that is one thing I'm really looking forward to with next-gen games is, you know, maybe not straight away, but the potential to have, you know, you know, a very different gaming experience, you know, lots of different things coming in. If you guys saw the Titanfall video I made a few days ago, that just shows, you know, a completely innovative and different way of approaching, you know, a video game. Just something completely fresh and new. Really looking forward to stuff like that. And just looking forward to franchises like Battlefield and Call of Duty, you know, changing up things a little bit. And a lot of people are saying, you know, I've said about Call of Duty Ghosts and Battlefield 4, all oh, these are supposed to be next-gen games, why is there no difference, you know, it's the same game, it's Modern War, it's like Modern Warfare 3.5, it's Battlefield 3.5. I mean, if a game works and it's a good game, then hey, why, why change it too much, you know, these companies really don't want to risk messing up something they've worked so hard on to build up. But in the same way, it would be great to see some, you know, really innovative stuff, the, uh, you know, the way those are both looking, I mean, there are their differences, but they're still quite similar. But you've got to remember that, you know, the the game developers haven't had um, access to the next gen consoles for that long yet. They really haven't. So it's going to take time before we start seeing, you know, the maximum potential of the next gen really being used. I mean, if you look at the improvement from uh, Call of Duty 4 up to Black Ops 2, just in terms of something quite simple like graphics... Um, you know, that's just in the lifespan of the Xbox 360. You know, it makes you wonder what is going to be possible if COD Ghosts and Battlefield 4 are our starting points on next-gen consoles. I mean, you've got a lot of people gaming on PC, but the game development is kind of driven by console. That's what the uh, mainstream use, that is what the mass market will be gaming on. So I thought I would just, yeah, just discuss that shortly. And another thing I wanted to mention that I found quite interesting is, you guys will know, quite a while ago... I made a commentary talking about how, you know, so much we are involved in is pretty much luck based and uh, a lot of what we do we don't have much control, a lot of what happens we don't have much control over and, uh, you know, a lot of people their successes are down to luck rather than anything else. But one thing I did find quite interesting and it, and it runs true is that no matter what situation you find yourself in, the only thing you really have any control over is how you react in a certain situation. You know, anything can happen. Luck could dictate anything, you know, anything at all. A small chance of something, you know, everything happening. But the way you react to that and the way you feel about that and what you decide to do, you know, luck has nothing to do with that. That is, that is what you inevitably decide to do. And obviously that's going to branch off with loads of possibilities and outcomes that are related to the uh, the idea of luck, but I just I just found that interesting. I'd never really thought about you know how I approach things in that way. 
before. But anyway, that is pretty much all I wanted to talk about in this video. You're going to watch us all throwing axes, sorry not axes, tomahawks at people, for the rest of the game on the map. Is this called launch? I can't even remember, that's terrible. But yeah, it was really fun to just go back and uh, give give the tomahawks a try. We were going for some some little bank shot final kill cams, which you'll see in just a moment. This would have been nice if it had connected, it wouldn't have been the final kill cam. Just that off the wall there. It must have been close actually. Now my teammate picks up the kill and uh, I'm just going to fast forward this bit. Alright, here we go, super fast mode, the failed attempts at getting a bank shot kill cam. And then, to be fair, Bucko did get a bank shot kill cam, but it wasn't quite as spectacular as anyone was hoping. Almost looked like he was going for the claim there. Anyway, that is Team Tomahawk. Once again, I do hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, feel free to leave a like rating. Feel free to head way back in the day and check out one of the old Team Tomahawk episodes through the link on the screen, the previous episode, and also the playlist for, of episodes from about a year and a half ago. Feel free to watch them. I'm sure they'll be amusing. And uh, I will catch you guys on my next video.